What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm down at Hendrick BMW Northlake. We're gonna take a look at the newest generation for the BMW X1. This is the S-Drive 28i. So huge shout out to them for providing this SUV for me today. Make sure you guys check out all of their info that's down in the description. The X1 that you see behind me is finished off in photonic blue metallic and it has a list price right over $40,000. As we start off today's review, we're gonna take a look at what powers this S-Drive 28i. So this has the two liter inline four cylinder twin power turbo engine paired with the eight speed automatic transmission. And it pumps out 228 horsepower around 5,000 RPM and 258 pound feet of torque as low as 1400 RPM. This model is front wheel drive. It weighs in right around 3,600 pounds. This can do zero to 60 in the mid six second range up to its top speed of 130 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 16.1 gallons. You can expect to see around 24 miles per gallon in the city and 33 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 105.1 inches. Its overall length is 175.5. It has a width of 81.1 and a height of 62.9 inches. As we work our way to the exterior now for this X1, let's start off with the kidney design for the grille. So on this model, it's finished off in chrome. I like all the black accents that you can see on the top portion, right in between all the vertical slats. Definitely gives it a great appearance. And you can see all these cutouts provide maximum cooling to that twin power turbo engine. You'll also see on the headlight housings here, this does come with LED headlights along with the LED DRLs. They have a really nice C-shaped design underneath the headlight and the high beam. And then on the top strip there, you can see the LED turn signal. This also has forward facing sensors. You'll see those integrated nicely in the lower section. And we do have the functional air inlets on both sides. So you can see all the way through, that will help channel the airflow right through the front bumper and around the front tires. Definitely gives it a really nice design with all the contoured lines that you can see. And in the lower section of the bumper, you can see all of those cutouts as well. Along with the brushed aluminum that's right in the lower section of the bumper, just to break it up a little bit, you can see the clean lines coming down both sides of the hood. And then as we work our way to the side, this gets a really nice set of 18 inch wheels. You can see the multi-spoke design as well as the two-tone pattern. Definitely gives it a great look against this exterior blue. We have the body colored side mirrors that are power folding. You can see the integrated turn signal. And then up top on the roof, this has the full panoramic sunroof. You can see more of that brushed aluminum on the roof rails. And then there's chrome trim surrounding the windows. There's also more brushed aluminum down in the lower side skirt. And you can tell from this angle here, we have really nice lines running down the side profile, especially at the height of the door handle there. Really distinctive line. You can see there's also a slight one in the lower section of the door, just to give it a great side looking design. And as we finish up in the rear, we have the body colored spoiler. You can see the gloss black on both sides of the glass, just to help blend that in. The wiper blade is in the lower section. This does have LED taillights as well as the backup camera. All of the parking sensors are of course integrated down in the lower section where you can also see the dual exhaust and more brushed aluminum right in the middle of the bumper. So it has a really nice exterior design to it. But with the outside out of the way, it's time to take a look at the interior. This is the key fob for the X1. We have unlock lock. You can also open up the power lift gate, which I'll show later. But with the vehicle locked and the key in my pocket, all I need to do is approach the vehicle, grab the door handle, and it will automatically unlock. Where we can move on to this beautiful door panel. You can see the oyster leather for the armrest and behind it. This also has wood trim and more brushed aluminum. You can see lock and unlock just in front of the release handle, as well as all the window controls and the side mirror adjustments. You can see one of the speakers for the audio sound system, as well as the power lift gate release, and a little bit of storage space down in the lower section of the door. And then as we work our way to the interior, you can see these beautiful leather seats, really nice design to them. You can see all the stitching. And then down on the side, you can see the memory seating adjustments as well as all the automatic controls. And now as we work our way to the interior for this X1, let's take a more in-depth view. I have the driver door open up all the way. You can see we have plenty of room to enter and exit. As we move on to the steering wheel now, you'll see it's completely covered in solid black leather with even black stitching running along the inside. We have some really nice trim accents on both sides, but now let's go ahead and start this up. So with my foot on the brake, we have the engine start stop button over on the right side and we can bring this to life. And then looking at this gauge cluster, you'll see on the left side is the miles per hour and the fuel gauge. On the right side is the tack as well as a live readout for your MPG. You can see what gear the vehicle is in as well as the efficient dynamics. And then you can also look at the information right in the center of the gauge cluster by using this top button over on the turn signal stock. So right now you can see the outside temperature along with the miles per hour. There's also the speed limit sign too. 
But if I push on that again, you can look at the date. You can also pull up some vitals. You can also see your range until empty. And then we have a live readout for the MPG as well. You can monitor that, reset it if you need to. You can look at your cruise control. As we move back to the steering wheel now, you'll see over on the right side, we have mode for the radio as well as volume and tuning. You also have Bluetooth and voice commands. Over on the left side is the cruise control settings. And then as we work our way to the left side of the steering wheel, you can see there's a small compartment down below. You could place any smaller items there that you'd like to. We have all the headlight controls as well as a dimmer switch for the gauges. You can see an air vent along with more of the wood trim. As we work our way to the middle now, this is the touchscreen system. You can see we're on the home screen right now where you can go through a lot of information. You can look at your notifications as well as your vehicle settings, pull up the navigation in full screen. You can also use all these controls located down below. So you'll see we have shortcuts to map and navigation as well as menu right in the center, media and phone, a rotary dial and back and option is just behind that. So just by pushing on menu, we're back to this screen here where we can view all this information I just went over. If we go into vehicle, you can go into all the vehicle settings. You can look at lighting, your doors and keys and a few other things. You can go into iDrive as well. Look at your different driver profiles and your vehicle status like TPMS and other vitals like that. So definitely a lot of information within that screen there. And if I go back, we can look at notifications, connected drive, and everything else here. You'll see more of the wood trim and brushed aluminum just underneath that, along with two air vents right in the center. We also have a shortcut to the intelligent safety. So just by pushing on this, you can pull up the front collision along with the pedestrian warning and the lane departure warning. You can configure all of those, go through that information as needed, which is great to see. As we work our way below that now, you'll see the piano black finish surrounding all of these controls. On the upper section here, we have power and volume for the radio, as well as all the different presets and tuning is over on the right side. And then below that, we have all of the climate controls. So you can see fan speed right in the center. If I go ahead and turn that on, we have temperature for driver and temperature for passenger, as this does have the dual zone climate system. You can control where you'd like the air to go, a few other buttons on both sides, and we even have the heated seat controls. So you have those for your front passengers. And then working our way below that, you can see there's two cup holders, a little bit of storage along with a 12 volt and a USB. You can see there's a grab handle for the passenger on this side covered in more of the leather and stitching. And then working our way to the gear selector now, with my foot on the brake, if I just push the trigger on the left side, we can go all the way up into reverse. And of course that pulls out the backup camera. We have the sensors on the left side, along with guidelines that you can turn on and off. You can also adjust the parking sensors too, whether you'd like those on or not. We can go all the way back into drive, pop it over into the manual setting. So if you do want to use this to shift, you can. And then just pushing the P on the top will put it back into park. And then over on the left side, you can see traction control along with the different driving modes. So just by pushing on those, you can see in the lower section of the gauge cluster, we have Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. So it's really nice just depending on how you'd like to drive this vehicle. We have a physical button for those parking sensors along with the electronic parking brake. You can see part of the storage right in the center there, but moving on to the armrest now, we can open up the upper section where you'll see there's a good amount of storage space. And then if you take this armrest out of the way, now we have access to all of the storage right in the middle along with a USB-C port. So you can place in any items there that you'd like to and charge electronics too. And then making our way to the glove box, you can see there's plenty of room for all of that information. We'll take one last look at this interior. Very nice against this exterior blue. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the full sunroof. So I can go ahead and open up the sunshade. It goes all the way to right behind the back seat headrest there. Definitely providing a lot of light. And then also up top, you can see we have the dome lights. As we work our way to the back seats now for the X1, you'll see we have the same design on the store panel, more wood and brushed aluminum with that two-tone look. Definitely gives it a great design. And at five foot 10, it's time to hop into the back seats. So I have the front seat set at my height. You can see I have plenty of room for my feet there and for my knees. There's also a storage pocket behind both front seats. And then with this seat fully reclined, I have around two or three inches above my head. Hopefully you can tell I have this side all the way up. So you do have some adjustability and you can see how much light is provided to the backseat passengers here. You'll also notice too, right in the middle, if we pull this down, we have the armrest along with two cup holders if you need to use it. And these seats have a 40, 20, 40 split to them. So just by pulling on this tab down below, you can see the middle seat fold down. If you have someone on both sides and you have some longer items, you can do that. Or you can fold all three seats down. It gives you a lot more versatility for this SUV, whether you have people in the back or you need that extra storage. And then you'll see down below, we have two air vents along with two more USB-Cs. So that way your backseat passengers can charge their electronics. And you'll see we have the dome lights up top on the side because we have that moonroof right in the middle. 
And then last up, we'll take a look at the rear storage space. I can use the button on the key fob or walk up to the car, of course. We have that power lift gate, so it will automatically open up. And now you can see with the back seats up, we have a lot of space. Very surprising to see for this smaller size SUV. You can pack in a lot of items. We do have this removable cover as well. So you can take that out, fold the back seats down, and you can see just how much more storage space there is, providing you with a lot of usability. Over on the driver's side, there's a very deep compartment where you can place some items. There's a net over on the passenger side, along with a 12 volt just above that. And we do even have some hidden storage space up underneath the floor. So I can fold that back and open this up. You can see the floor mats are currently in here, but look at the amount of hidden storage space you have. Definitely making it a very practical SUV. And then with the power lift gate up top, we can either close and lock the vehicle, push on the left one, it will automatically close. So getting this BMW X1 out on the road now, like I mentioned earlier, this is a smaller size SUV from BMW. It's slightly larger than the X2 though, but for the BMW lineup for the SUVs, this is on the smaller side, but I've been pretty impressed with the amount of room that BMW has utilized for this interior. It's very practical. There's a lot of room for five people to be in here comfortably. And as you saw earlier, there is so much space behind the back seats and even underneath the floor. That was surprising for me to see, just to add to the capability of making this a practical SUV. If you're not looking for something that's too large, this is a perfect option and you can still use it as a daily. It's very comfortable. I've put a few miles on it so far and it's been very quiet. Taking bumps like this, it's absorbing all these bumps very well. Now for the lineup for the BMW SUVs, this doesn't have all the technology on the interior here. So if that's not something that you're looking for, you don't need all of those extra bells and whistles. This is a great option if you just wanna get in it, drive it. You still have your media and radio, your navigation. You can hook up your phone, of course. So if you're not looking for anything above that, perfect option to get this model so it's nice that BMW offers that option so now let's go ahead pop it into sport mode we can see that on the center screen there we'll give it a little bit of gas here nothing crazy and get up to the speed this is definitely not the fastest SUV that they have to offer but it's very smooth too and we got up to speed just like that. It's very quiet, which would make it even more of a better daily driver. As we come around this right-hand turn, still handles well, feels planted, just going at a regular speed for this type of vehicle. It's not a performance BMW, but it still handles really well. So now let's go ahead and talk about the visibility for this SUV. While it is a smaller size vehicle, we have a little bit of a pillar over that right shoulder there, but when you have your side mirrors adjusted properly, I really don't have any blind spots. I've been able to see all the traffic that's been around me in certain situations today. I can look over my left shoulder, look out of that glass, and again, over my right shoulder, I can't see out of that side window for the cargo area, and then out of the back glass, of course, I can even see out of both of them through my rear view. And so now switching over to the POV angle for the BMW X1, you can get another look at this interior with all these controls down below, very easy to access those. I still currently have the vehicle in drive. Let's go ahead and use the shifter down below now. You can see what gear we're in, it says S4. The S is of course for sport mode there. And just by pushing on this forwards, we can go down into second gear. Wow. It's very responsive in the shift. Even though I'm using the shifter down below, it's definitely very responsive. As soon as I push this up or down, you can see that gear change. Hopefully you can see it on the camera angle there. Very impressive for not being the most sport oriented BMW SUV. I'm impressed, I'm definitely impressed with how this is handling and its performance for the engine. And once again, we can take a quick look at visibility over that right shoulder, come back over the left shoulder, window sticker is right there. Obviously you can still see around that, of course, when it's gone. And as we take one more sharp turn for today, brakes do a great job, normal rate of speed here, give it some power. And we're back up to speed. Definitely a great option if you're in the market for an SUV. You don't need something that's big. You don't want a lot of tech. We still have the lane keeping assist, which is currently on at the moment. So it's a great option. We have a lot of nice premium feeling materials. All of the wood trim, the brushed aluminum, 
You can even see some ambient lighting, which I did forget to mention earlier. Currently it is red. You can see it right up on top of the airbag cover there. It's even on the door panels too, right at the top of the wood trim. So that is a great touch to see. A little bit hard to see during the day, of course. But I think that's going to wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive, getting behind the wheel of the latest generation for the BMW X1, the S Drive 28i. Once again, huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this vehicle for me today. Check out their website. All that info is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on our daily uploads. I'll see you all in the next video. Video.